Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Doc Janelle. This is the second part of the muscular system discussion. At this point, we've already talked about the physiology and how muscle contraction happens. This time around, we'll be talking about the identification of each skeletal muscle. But before that, let's first talk about some important skeletal muscle anatomical terms, such as your tendon. Please do remember that the tendon is the connection between muscle and bone. Aponeurosis is also, it also acts as a connection between bones and muscles, but their appearance are different compared to tendon. Aponeurosis appear broad and sheet-like, like paper. And then we also have retinaculum, which is a band of connective, connective tissue that holds down the tendons at the wrist and ankles. You can search that up. And then skeletal muscles also have origin and insertions. When we say origin, it is the attachment at the least mobile location or at the um, non-movable portion, while insertion is the attachment of the muscle to the bone, which is mobile. The part of the muscle between the origin and insertion is called the belly. And when muscles work together to perform an action, we call them agonists, while muscles which oppose the actions of each other are called antagonists. So here is an image of that, this whitish portion over here. This, those are your tendons which attaches the muscle to the bone. All right. And then the, this is the origin because our shoulders are usually non-mobile, while your forearm and your arm are very, very mobile. So those are your insertions, no? And then the part in the middle is what we call the belly. Now, the biceps and the triceps usually are agonists because when one contracts, the other should relax. And when the triceps contract, the biceps naman should relax. Muscles are named depending on their location, their size, their shape, and orientation of the muscles. So by knowing the definition of the names of the muscles, it would give you already a big clue as to its function, where you will find it, what is the appearance of the muscle. Um, it can also be named according to their origin and insertion according to the number of heads that the muscle has and according to their function. So here are the muscles on the anterior aspect, the muscles on the posterior aspect. So tips for muscle identification. Observe the shape, location, and action of each muscle. For knowing the origin and insertion is not yet important now, but once you go into medicine, you will have to memorize everything. Sealy is still our reference and you should be able to at least read the reviewer I gave and even this video several times for you to get familiar with the muscles. Let us start with the muscles of the head and neck. First, we have here highlighted in green your occipital frontalis. Occipital because that is the origin while frontalis is the insertion. What the occipital frontalis does when it contracts, it elevates your eyebrows and it also moves your scalp, you know, your forehead. This is your orbicularis oculi. This is a circular muscle. It's the meaning of orbicularis, circular. And it encircles our eyes and its job is to close our eyes. Next is the orbicularis oris, again another circular muscle. It um, envelopes or encloses your lips, no? It closes your lips and it also allows you to pock your lips just like when you kiss. Next is the buccinator. This is the muscle important for uh, forming the lateral walls of the, the cheeks, la, rather, of your mouth or the oral cavity. The, uh, aside from keeping food inside the mouth, their other job is to retract the angle of the mouth meaning it can pull our lips towards the sides, as in smiling, and it can blow up, such as in this image, or suck up the cheeks, like in this image. 
Next, we have the zygomaticus major and minor. The first one here, the bigger one, is your zygomaticus major. The one in the middle is your zygomaticus minor. So the job of your zygomaticus, they are attached to the angle of your orbicularis oris. If you, mean, if you notice, no? Doon sila naka-attach. So once it contracts, it will pull the angle of the mouth sidewards and it allows us to smile, just like this image of Tom Holland. We also have the levator labi superioris. So if you've noticed, this image is quite different from this because your levator labi superioris is a deep muscle. So from the name itself, levator, it elevates what? The lips or the labi. Where? Upwards. So it elevates the upper lip and it is a deep facial muscle. And it can do this. We also have the depressor anguli oris from the name itself. Depresses the angle of the mouth. Okay? So it's this is where you will find them. And it causes us to frown. And it's the opposite of your levator labi superioris. We also have the temporalis here. No? So, its job is to elevate the mandible. What is the mandible? That's the lower jaw. The upper jaw is maxilla. The lower jaw is mandible. So, it elevates the mandible or it closes the jaw. So, when it contracts upwards, it will pull the lower jaw back to the closed position. We also have the masseter, which is an important chewing muscle. It can elevate and protract the mandible. Protract means to move forward, such as in this image. And when we say elevate, it also means to close the jaw. So that's what it can do. We also have the pterygoid. I think this is the only muscle that opens the jaw. Okay, it's a deep muscle as well. And it depresses the mandible and opens the jaw such as in this image of Jungkook. Now, we have three muscles for mastication, the temporalis and the masseter, which closes your mouth, and then the pterygoids, which open the jaw. Next, we have the sternocleidomastoid. This muscle is named according to its origin and insertion. The origin is the sternum, diba? and then it, is, it inserts into the mastoid process of the skull and also it has an or it has also has an attachment at the clavicle din yung cleido clavicle so sternum clavicle and the mastoid process so it allows us to rotate and flex the neck such as when you're looking down yeah. next are the muscles of the trunk starting with the rectus abdominis so this us uh, this is a very long muscle right in the middle of the abdomen and it allows us to flex our vertebral column you know to flex and to compress our abdomen in order for you to see your six pack abs Next we have the external abdominal oblique so external meaning location siya yung pinakalabas oblique is the orientation of the muscles. If you notice, the external abdominal oblique, um, yung direction niya is towards the middle and downwards, as in a letter V. Towards the middle and downwards. The white part here is your aponeurosis. The job is to compress the abdomen. Deep inside the external abdominal oblique is your internal abdominal oblique with the same function to compress the abdomen. But the orientation is what's different. Ito naman, towards the middle pero upwards as in letter A. Okay? And then, underneath the internal abdominal oblique, you would find your transversus abdominis, which is a horizontal muscle. Kaya nga transverse, di ba? Up on the chest, we have the pectoralis major. So you can see, ito yung malaki kay, uh, paano nito? Si Captain America, no? So, once it contracts, it will pull the upper arm closer to the body and we call that adduction. 
and it is attached to the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. We also have a pectoralis minor underneath the major. Its job is to depress the scapula. So when you want to relax your shoulders, no, when you want to bring them down, that's your pectoralis minor moving. Also, we have serratus anterior here on the sides, seen kay Manny Pacquiao. Their job is to actually elevate the ribs, especially during inhalation. So during inhalation, it's very important for us to elevate our ribs and your serratus anterior helps in doing that. On your back, we have the latissimus dorsi, siya yung parang triangular muscle here at the back. Um, bodybuilders would call it the lats. And their job is to extend the shoulders and adduct the arm. Kasi if you notice, they're attached to the arm as well. So once it contracts, you have to pull your arms towards the body. You know, forming yung parang palikpik. Let's now go to the muscles of the back. We have the trapezius. This is the one that forms your broad shoulders. No, Trapezius because it appears diamond in shape. And it allows us to extend the neck. And extend the neck. We also have the levator scapulae here. And from the name itself, it elevates a scapula. The rhomboids, kaya tinawag na rhomboid because it's square in shape. This is one rhomboid and another rhomboid. It allows us to retract our scapula. Retract meaning to move backwards. We also have the teres major, which allows us to extend, adduct, and rotate the arm. So, arm rotation, teres major. We also have a group of muscles called rotator cuff muscles. And ang palatandaan dyan, or um, the mnemonic is SITS. What is SITS? Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. So their job is... It basically the rotator cuff muscles allow us to rotate our shoulder. So each one of them would have different functions in order to rotate the shoulder. The supraspinatus, which is this one, this is found at the back on top of the shoulder spine. Its job is to abduct, meaning to pull the arm away from the body together with the deltoids. So please do remember that. And then we have the infraspinatus and the supraspinatus. Their job is to extend and rotate the arms. And the teres minor, external rotation of the arm. Deep inside the ribs, we have the external intercostal. Um, their job is to expand the thorax. Again, it's needed for elevating the ribs for breathing. And note the direction. It is medial, meaning towards the center and downwards. Similar to your external abdominal oblique. Diba? Downwards and towards the middle, as in a letter V. Underneath the external intercostals is your internal intercostals. So, this compresses the thorax. So, opposite siya ni external intercostals. So, ang position naman niya is lateral, downwards and lateral, as in a letter A. Downwards and lateral. For the upper extremity, we have the deltoid, which is a um, inverted triangle. Main job of the deltoid is for abduction. And the other muscle for abduction is supraspinatus. There are only two of them, deltoid and supraspinatus. Next, we have the brachialis and brachioradialis. So since they are attached to the humerus, they have that break in their name. And then, so brachialis is located underneath the biceps. Ito siya, brachialis. And then the brachioradialis is attached to the radial bone. Their job is to flex the forearm or the elbow. So when you flex your muscles, yeah. We also have the flex, flexor carpi radialis, this one. Radial meaning thumb. Takpit pakitandaan yun, radial is thumb. And then ulna is pinky finger. And then the flexor digitorum on each finger. Yeah. Their job, itong dalawa, is to flex the wrist 
while this one flexes the fingers. They are found on the um, anterior aspect of the forearm. When you think of the um, anatomical position, sila yung nasa anterior. And then, on the posterior aspect of the forearm, we have the opposite. Extensor carpi radialis and extensor carpi ulnaris, which extends and adducts the wrist, while your extensor digitorum extends the fingers. Um, on the hips, you have the iliosoas. So, iliosoas is a combination of two muscles. Those two muscles are the iliacus and the psoas muscle. So, the iliosoas originate from the thoracic spine. So, galing sa thoracic spine, and they would insert into the femur. Okay? So, this muscles flexes the hips and allows us to sit down. We also have this very long muscle on the side. We call it the tensor fascia lata. And once this contracts, it will pull the leg towards the side, like this one. So it's for abducting the thigh. On the back part, we have this big muscle called gluteus maximus. We also have this muscle on the side called gluteus medius. And underneath that, we have the gluteus minimus. So basically, the medius and minimus would um, have the same function, internal rotation of the thigh, while the gluteus maximus for extending the thigh or putting the legs backwards. We also have a group of muscles in front here, the anterior portion called quadriceps. So there are four muscles: rectus femoris, rectus uh, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and then vastus intermedialis. Their job is to Extend the leg and to straighten the knee. We also have the longest muscle of the body called sartorius. From the hips down to the um, tibia. Yeah. Their job is to flex the thigh. At the posterior portion, we also have the hamstring muscles composed of three. The semimembranosus, semitendinosus, and the rectus femoris. Their job is to extend the thigh. When we say extend, to put backwards. At the calf, at the posterior of the calf, we have the gastrocnemius and soleus. Their job is for plantar flexion. Plantar flexion means to tiptoe. So, you try to tiptoe, you would notice that muscle on your calf going upwards. That's your gastrocnemius and soleus. And then that muscle that allows dorsiflexion, opposite ng plantar flexion, or heel walking, is your tibialis anterior. We also have those muscles which allows us to extend our toes called extensor digitorum longus. Here are the muscles of the pelvic floor. First is the levator ani, which elevates the anus and is composed of three muscles, the puborectalis, pubococcygeus, and iliococcygeus. We also have the ischiocavernosus, which forms the base of the penis and clitoris, and the bulbus spongiosus, which erects the clitoris and penis. Lastly, we have the external anal sphincter. That's it, guys.